Allie Weber, and this is... Lamore Freed. And I am interviewing her today. Where are we? Um, we're at, at Adafruit Industries. Were you always interested in engineering and making? I always really liked making stuff, but I didn't know I wanted to be an engineer. Like, I really liked taking apart stuff and making things, but it wasn't until I went to school and I studied engineering that I realized I like that part of it, too. I like the math part and the, the rigor of it. What about you? Do you like making, engineering? I really like making ever since I was really little. I, I always messed around with cardboard and hot glue guns, and then I got into the more engineering with um, boards and soldering and stuff like that when I was older. Um, when did you know that this was what you wanted to do? Hmm, like run Adafruit? Yes. Well, I guess the way it started is, you know, I was in school, and um, when you're in school, you do this terrible thing called a thesis. And you don't want to do it, but you have to do it. And I was avoiding doing it by making video games and making stuff and all the stuff that you like to do and I like to do. And as I was making these projects, people kept contacting me and saying, hey, will you sell me a kit of these parts? And then after I graduated, I realized I don't want to get a job because it's horrible. <laughs> so I thought instead, maybe I'll just make a company where I do what I like to do, which is making kits and projects. And I'll sell them to people and maybe I can make a little bit more money on the selling than I spend on the making and it's gonna work out and it did cool so were you always confident that it would work out no <laughs> it's terrifying uh, there's lots of times where you're like is this gonna work out it's really scary um, you know you have lots of highs and lows they call it sort of like the roller coaster mm -hmm. of entrepreneurship um, you know, some days you're like, everything's a failure. It's not going to work out. I, I need to go get a job. And some days you're like, I am queen of the world. And, you know, you just kind of have to learn to surf those emotional waves. But overall, I, I'm feeling like it's working out. Cool. What was it like to study at MIT? Really hard. <laughs> uh, you know, the saying of MIT is uh, IHTFP, which is I hate this freaking place. Uh, it's really hard. But it's also really satisfying because when you set yourself up to a challenge, do something really hard, like go to MIT and graduate, do that thesis, and you do it, you're like, I did it. And that must mean that I'm good at it and I was successful. So it's hard, but having done it, I'm really glad that I did it. Cool. Um, what is your favorite board or boards you've created and most proud of and why? Mm. My favorite right now is, I think, the Circuit Playground, and that's a, you know, a board that can run CircuitPython, which is my new favorite programming language. You know, every girl has to have a favorite programming language, and that's mine. Uh, and uh, what I like about it is it's got all these sensors and things built into it because I had a lot of students and kids contact me and say, you know, I want to do electronics, but I don't want to have to wire and solder because it, it gets really complicated. You know, it gets complicated, a loose wire, and you think it's your code, but it's really the wire. And so I decided to make something where everything is built in together, and that way it's really easy for people to get started. So right now I'm most excited about that. Cool. And what are your favorite projects that you've made using that board? Ooh, okay, favorite projects. Well, we have this really cool magic wand kit, which I really like, um, and that uses uh, MakeCode or CircuitPython. Um, other projects I like is um, for Halloween, we made uh, a neat pumpkin, and you put the Circuit Playground inside, and it makes it look like there's a, a candle flickering inside. So that's like very festive coming up on Halloween. All of um, late September and October is Halloween, by the way. Like you can, it's six weeks long. Uh, other projects I like, I like, um, we had these cool circuit walker sneakers that Tony D did where when you walk or you dance, they light up and flicker. Um, we have sound reactive you know, bow ties and ties and clothing. I think there's um, a woman at Maker Faire who made a prom dress with a circuit playground uh, for, her, for her prom event, and she had the coolest dress by far. That would be really cool to wear to prom. Yeah. Oh, to Maker Faire, so maybe yeah. we'll see her this weekend. Um, cool. Who were your role models when you were younger? My role models were, I definitely think, you know, my parents and my sisters. I have three sisters, and they're all really creative in different ways. And they kind of showed me it's cool to just get some paper mache and some cardboard and hot glue, just like you did, and just, just make something fun. So I think they kind of inspired me the most. That's really cool. What advice do you have for young makers like yourself? Or well, myself, sorry. Yeah, I'm not so young anymore. But uh, my, my biggest advice, and this is something that isn't really taught in schools is I think sometimes 
um, when you start in the maker community or like any group, you compare yourself to like the biggest and the best thing you can see. So you, you know, if you're starting to cosplay, you'll see like videos of people at Comic Con. You'll be like, wow, I'm trying to do cosplay, and like this person just like they look just like the character. They have the makeup and the outfit and the sword, and it glows. Like, how can I do that? And it's okay to have a little bit of that fear and apprehension, but when you're starting out, don't try. I mean have a goal of having something big, but do small projects and redo projects you've seen. Like you don't have to be original. Mm -hmm. um, originality comes later after you've gained um, skill with the material. So it's totally okay to uh, copy and clone and make variants of what you see out there. That's like why we do open source hardware here is so you can do that. Right, and then everybody can share what they're doing with other people. Yeah, and then you remix it. So like you might build a project kind of like what you see on like the learning system or on you know Hackster or on Maker.io, but then after you finish the project, you're like, oh, you know, I want to change the colors. I want to change the design. And that's when you're going to put your creativity in. And then you'll do more and more of that until you're suddenly making your own original projects. Mm -hmm. And then everybody learns and everybody's happy. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited to go to Maker Faire this weekend with DigiKey. Um, when were you first introduced with Dig uh, to DigiKey, and how have they helped you as a maker and engineer? DigiKey is kind of interesting because they're you know they're this catalog company, and um, they actually used to have a catalog. All right, there's like it's like a phone book. You don't even know what a phone book is. Okay, there's this gigantic book that they'd send you and you'd flip through it and so that was kind of fun because you'd get ideas for parts and projects and I would look in the back of magazines like we had electronics magazines and they'd say oh you can build this like DTMF decoder or like this relay timer kit project mm -hmm. and so what was neat is they'd usually have digikey part numbers and so you'd actually call on the phone 1-800-DIGIKEY and a really nice person from Minnesota would answer and then you'd actually just tell them the numbers you wanted and give them your credit card number and like they'd ship you a box this was like kind of before the internet mm -hmm. um, and it worked really well. I got all my parts and I was actually able to build projects. So this, you know, there was no other way to get parts. Like you could kind of go to Radio Shack, but they didn't have all the really weird parts. Right. They only had the most common parts. So like the fact that you could call somebody on the phone and get access to like a million parts made any project really easy. It would show up in a couple days. So that was really cool. Right. That sounds really cool. Yay. All right. Well, thanks for coming and visiting. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Andrew.